In this video, we will cover auto index programming. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released. One thing we have not talked about yet in this tutorial series is auto index stations. In this video, we will look at programming auto index stations. Most turret punch presses are equipped with auto index stations. These stations give the programmer the flexibility to punch with a tool rotated at any angle. After examining how auto index stations work, we will review some G code patterns we covered in previous videos and use them with auto index stations. Depending on the turret configuration, machines can have two, three, or four auto index stations. These can be B or one and a quarter inch stations, C or two inch stations, D or three and a half inch stations, and E or four and a half inch stations. An auto index station allows us to control the angular orientation of the tool in that station, or simply put, rotate the punch and die to the angle we require before a hit is performed. As with any other angular specification when programming, the angular precision is up to the hundredth of a degree. This means the minimum increment we can rotate a tool is 0.01 degrees. To program a particular angle on an auto index station, we use the C axis. So for a single hit, we simply add a C parameter to our coordinates with the required angle. By default, all auto index stations are at zero degrees. So when we put a tool in an auto index station, we normally load it at zero degrees. Normally, the longest part of the tool is in the direction of zero degrees with respect to the x-axis. For example, if we load a rectangle that is one inch by a quarter inch in an auto index station, we would put the one inch in the direction of zero degrees. This way the station is at zero degrees and the tool in the station is at zero degrees. Now if we program the station to turn to 33.33 degrees, the tool will also be at 33.33 degrees. Let's go to punch sim and verify some examples. So if we punch a single hit at x5, y5, t, 201, c, 33.33 degrees. The machine will move the sheet to place the point X5, Y5 under the striker. It will also turn the turret to bring the station T201 under the striker, if it's not already there. Once the station is under the striker, it will then turn the station to 33.33 degrees. After all these movements are completed, the machine will punch one hit of the punch in that station. We see in the simulation our hit with the one by a quarter tool at 33.33 degrees. Let's add a second hit at x8, y5. We have not specified a different station, so we are still using t201. We are also not specifying any auto index angle or c. Let's simulate, and we see that the second hit is punched using the same tool at the same angle. This is because the auto index orientation will not change unless we ask for a different C angle. Let's add another hit, X11, Y5, C90. We can see that the third hit is at 90 degrees, as we specified. Now let's add another line, this time with another tool, a 1 inch round in station T304, X14, Y5, T304. There is our one hit with a round tool. Now let's add another hit using the tool we previously used, X17. Y5, T201. 
We know this is an auto index station, but we will not specify any particular angle. The result is that the heat with the tool in the station T201 is at zero degrees. Every time you change station before leaving an auto index station and rotating the turret, the auto index station will return back to zero degrees. So if we come back to the station later on, it will by default be back at zero degrees. If we want it at 33.33 degrees, we must specify it once again. So basically, by adding the parameter C, we program the angle of the auto index stations. Please note that if you specify a C parameter on a non-auto index station, this will cause a program error. You are not required to specify a C parameter with an auto index station. It can be treated as any other station and will punch with the tool at the angle it is loaded in that station. Now let's see how the auto index stations work with the patterns we covered in the previous videos. We'll use Punch Sim to view the effects of auto index stations with patterns. If you want more information on the Punch Sim software, click the link to visit cncsoft.com. We'll start with G28 line at angle. Here are two examples of G28. In both cases, we turn the tool to the same angle as the line of hits, which is 30 degrees. The angle of the tool can be any angle we need and not necessarily the same as the line angle. The two are independent. So we can have the line angle at 30 degrees but the tool at 135 degrees. We can see the result in punch sim. Next up is G26, bolt hole circle. Here we see something different. If you use the C parameter to turn the tool to a particular angle, G26 will rotate the tool before every hit on that circle by the incremental degrees between hits. So let's look at these two examples. In the first example, we have a hit at the center at zero degrees, and then a G26. we can see that the tool remains at the same angle throughout all the hits. In the second example, there's a G72 to specify the center of the circle, and then there's a C on the G26 line to specify the angle of the tool when it punches the first hit on the circle. The first hit is at 45 degrees on the circle, and we want the tool to be at 135 degrees when that first hit is punched. Therefore, we specify C 135. With all the other hits, we see that the G26 will automatically turn the tool. If no C is specified on the G26, punching will be performed without rotating the tool at angle between hits. The final pattern we will review using an auto index station is G68, nibbling arc. In this example, we see that the arc starts at 25 degrees and we want the tool to be perpendicular at the first hit. So 25 plus 90 is 115 degrees. Therefore, we set C to 115 degrees. The auto index station will turn the tool with every subsequent hit to keep the tool perpendicular. You may remember G68 nibbling arc is in the nibbling mode of the machine. So we have two restrictions. One is that the material thickness must be less than 0.125 inches or 3.2 millimeters. The second restriction is that the pitch must not exceed the maximum nibbling pitch for the machine. When we are nibbling with an auto index station, we have a third restriction. We must also make sure we do not exceed the maximum nibbling angular pitch for the machine. 
Each machine has a maximum angle that the auto index can turn in between hits in nibbling mode. Please verify with your machine manual for the maximum angular pitch. If you would like to calculate what the angular pitch result will be given an arc radius and a pitch, you can use the following formula. If your G68 line produces an angular nibbling pitch greater than the limit for your machine, it will cause a program error. In that case, you can either reduce the pitch, which will mean more hits, and therefore a smaller angle interval between hits, or you can use G78, which will produce the same arc, but in punching mode. In punching mode, there is no maximum limit, as the machine will wait for everything to be in position before applying every hit. That covers auto index programming. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or email us directly at support at cncsoft.com. See you soon in the next video as we continue our punch programming course series. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released.